he was paying attention to what was going on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So. Interesting. Um, I don't know if the, I know we were going to maybe cover this later, but uh, Vosgan is asking, was Armenia the pilot project to adopt Christianity? It's uh, interesting. Do you want to answer that now or do you want to? Is it too early based on the <laughs> subject? <laughs> for... So I'll give a partial response to that. This yeah. is something that I have heard by a lot of different people. This is something that I have thought about as well. That's one of the reasons why I decided to do a deep dive to try to understand. And to call it a pilot project of Rome um, is a little bit... It One of the problems with this is that it implies that Armenia was this vassal state that was th being thrown around like a ball between two empires. And it takes away the agency of the people and of the ruling yeah. elite of Armenia. And if we look outside of the legends, if we look besides the legends at what steps were taken and what was happening in the empire at the time, between the two empires in the region at the time, we see that it wasn't just Armenia that took these steps. There, the, one of the things that Armenia did was cement a specific identity based on this transformation, based on this conversion. But this was something that was being done by other groups as well. You have the Coptic church, you have the Syriac church, you have the Ethiopian church, all of these based on very specific belief systems were able to establish an autonomous identity. So it wasn't really, I wouldn't, based on this, I wouldn't really call it a Roman pilot project. It was, it may have, that may have been the intention, but it became more intentional on the part of Armenians, mm -hmm. a more intentional effort to become more autonomous. And one of the reasons is you see a rejection of Zoroastrianism rather than an embrace of Roman ideas. Yeah. So interesting. But, Thank you for the question, uh, Voskin. Uh, pilot project beta, it, beta it, it, test it, it, doesn't it, matter. It, it, <laughs> same thing. Um, so uh, uh, let's get into the significance of major events that can usher these along uh, wars, plagues, etc. Um, as we've seen throughout history, such events can be very convincing to the uh, to the masses to turn faith-based practice. Absolutely. And again, this is part of that that process that starts the conversion. You know, you have the missionaries. Along with the missionaries, you have merchants who introduce these ideas to various populations. Merchants are very important parts, uh, that play an important role in introducing new ideas because merchants are the people who blur boundaries they blur national boundaries they blur empire boundaries even during the period that uh, during periods where rome and sasanian empires were at extreme odds one another merchants were still traveling across the two empires yeah. and so this is one of the best ways to have ideas circulate and so merchants played an important role in this process but then you know a merchant dresses well, brings up new ideas. You know, they're fashionable, they're appealing. So yeah. people are going to listen to them. But I mean, especially I, back then, yeah. buy my snake oil. <laughs> <laughs> but how many influencers, Instagram influencers yeah. would make you convert? You know, if we're thinking of modern day, yeah, you need a little Good bit point. more than that. It's not just, well, I think it's also very difficult nowadays to convert uh, it was more difficult oh, back then. Really? You think so? So uh, to think of it uh, as far as the religious ideology of the people, it, you know, it was a polytheistic system, but it occupied every part of your life. What you ate was associated with the supernatural. What you drank was associated with the supernatural. When you slept, what you thought, I mean, uh, even when you reuse the restroom, you know, yeah. all of these yeah. things were associated with the supernatural. So people, these belief systems were deeply embedded. We're a little bit more um, cut off from that religiosity, from that level of contact with the supernatural. We're in a more secular uh, society. So conversion would actually that would be a little bit easier. You see a lot of different cults pop popping up constantly mm -hmm. in modern society. And it's because people are in search 
um, people are a little bit more wheel, willing to, you know, try new things. Yeah. You know, even if it's belief systems. But back then, your entire, I mean, think of it this way. Your ancestral lineage, which was extremely important to you, was tied to you, the supernatural belief system, to the belief systems tied to the supernatural. So it wouldn't be an easy thing to simply say, well, you know, I think I'm going to try this new thing. And that's why the new converts were typically people of the lower classes, because the lower classes were the ones who were more marginalized in society, who were seeking ways to become a, to more prosperous in, in, in many ways, not just not just, let's say, financially, but you know, whether they grew crops or whatever the case is. Right? Yeah. So part of that was also, you know, to fit, uh, to fulfill their material needs, but also to find a little bit of equality in society. Yeah. That's why you have the lower classes and especially women in patri uh, in patriarchal societies. And these were very patriarchal societies. So women are extremely marginalized at that point, And there is a need to try to feel a little bit equal to the members of the society. And if you look at the core tenets before Christianity became part of the state religion, at the core ideology behind Christianity, there's this notion of equality. Whether you're poor, especially if you're poor, if you're marginalized, you are more, you have a place. You have a place in society. So if you felt left out, you were more likely to gravitate, gravitate towards this. Yeah. 